Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at partitioning in SQL Server and in particular how to create a sliding window. Now this is part two of a multiple part series. So uh, part one we created the partition and the scheme and we showed the basics involved in, in setting this up to get to create the sliding window. So put a link to that video there if you're interested. I'll just create those quickly here so if you want more details then worth checking that out. Um, before we do jump in though, if you find yourself enjoying the video, feel free to click that subscribe below, change the alert icon to all and you'll get updates for future videos. Okay, let's jump in. So yeah, we're looking to create a sliding window with partitions. Now, what this benefit, what benefit does this give? Well, the ability to upload and remove data as meta operations. So if you've got um, a set of sales data, say, and you have six months of it, and you only need to keep six months, then every month, you want to be cutting off that last month of data and getting ready to import the new data. Uh, without partitions, you're going to be doing something like delete from table, uh, where date is less than six months old. Uh, so if you've got lots of data, lots of tables, that's going to potentially be a very big blocking operation. And this is where partitions helps us because um, it's just a meta operation. So it can be pretty much instant. Uh, it does need a lock. So you do need um, a quiet time or to stop the services, but it's very quick at that point. It's not going to take a long time. So that's what it, that's what it can provide us. Um, certainly quite a lot of... Um, potentially you'd think it might help performance in queries using partitions but anything that you would want to um, uh, speed up there you would probably be looking at indexes more than partitions partitions not really for speeding up perf um, performance more for this ability to in this case have a sliding window okay enough there let's jump in I'll, so i'll very quickly create the setup we had before so i won't go into any details here like i say but we'll just put this together here now so we'll create our partition function um, and we'll call that, um, so it's going to be based on the date um, and we'll call it date PF and that will use date time and we'll do as um, range right for values. And we'll just make this a little bit smaller than just so we can get it on one line here. Um, so these are going to be our partitions for each month. So we're going to have a monthly boundary. So let's start at the start of the year. So we'll start in January and we'll have another one in Feb and then one more in March. Like so. Uh, right, so I should be able to create that. That's cool. Oh, I'm doing it in March. So let's... Um, Let's just create a new database. And we'll do it all in there. Okay, I'll run that again. All right, so we create a partition function, then we need a partition scheme. So let's do partition scheme. And this will be date partition scheme. Um, as partition... Uh, date pf and then we need to say where each of our um, partitions will reside and we're going to do um, all to primary so you can put partitions onto individual files and file groups and that's great if you want to be able to split your data across disks um, if you don't need to, if you're not interested in doing that then it's a lot easier just to keep it all on one file group uh, right so we're going to keep it on the primary there so uh, okay, we've got a partition function and partition scheme. We can apply that to our table. Right, so let's create, um, create a table invoice. And in there we'll have, we'll have the date. Actually, date time, we'll just have an amount. Just an integer. And so normally you, you, would, you would like put this on, on the primary. So it's always on one. Um, file group, but for us, we need to specify partitions within that file group, and that's why we put our function here. So we have date, um, partition schema, and then we have the column that we're going to uh, partition on, which is going to be date. Uh, so that's on. Um, right, so if we create that table, that looks all 
Good. So I'm just going to move to a new one now because that's our setup as we had previously. Um, if I do a select star from sys.partition range values, we can see uh, these partitions that we created. So I've got my January one here. Can I make this bit bigger as well? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's just zoom that in a bit. Let's go all the way up there. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit more readable there now. Uh, right, so yeah, we got our three partition boundaries. So three boundaries, which means we get four partitions. Um, we can see that when I come into this DM DB partition stats, and we'll do it for our table. Um, so we look at invoice. Like so, if I run that. So here's our three boundaries that we created, January, February, March. And then that means we have four partitions. So one, two, three, four down here. Uh, and the data will go into each of those based on the date of the entry that we make. So let's put some data in. So let's go into invoice. Um, so we'll put something in quite early, so it goes way into that first partition. So something in, in 2020, and we'll just say we only got five there. Uh, we're going to do a few of these. So well, we've got four partitions, so we want four bits of data. So let's then have back into 2021, and we'll go January, February, March. I'll just make this one slightly smaller again. All right, so if we insert this data now, um, at the moment you can see we've got no, no data specified there. The row count is empty. Uh, if I just dock out of the way, yeah, row count down there. Um, so let's run that and then have a look at our stats again here. Uh, well, we can see we've now got data on each of those partitions. So you can picture that is your, your sales data. Um, and now it comes to the new month and you want to get rid of the oldest data. So what you might be looking at doing, i get rid of that, um, is to do a delete from, uh, delete from invoice where date is less than, you know, you would do maybe date add month minus six, yeah, date, something like that. Um, so, and that would work, that would work. But if you've got a lot of data, that's going to cause a problem. And that's where the sliding window comes into account. So we don't want to do that. What we would like to do is call truncate because that is instant. Um, so how would we be able to do that? We can't call truncate on our table. Let's have a look. Select star from invoice. Um, I can't just call truncate on this because that's going to get rid of everything. But we want to be able to call truncate on a particular partition. Uh, and there's a way for us to do this um, in that we can switch a partition out to a completely new table and then call truncate on that table itself. So if we create now a, a staging table, so it's going to be exactly the same uh, if I come back in here, what we want is exactly the same table, same indexes, same columns, and we'll just give it a different name. Um, and we don't need it to be partitioned, just need to have it on the same file group. So we can stick it on primary and that's fine. So I'm going to create this invoice staging table now. Come back in here. And if we look at both of these tables, we'll see um, we've got our data for each month in invoice and nothing in staging. So how do we get it into staging? How do we get one partition into staging? Well, we can switch it in. So we can do an alter table invoice and we can say switch partition and we want the first partition because that's the oldest data. Switch partition one to 
invoice staging. Now, so notice down here again, yes, yeah, so the data is in invoice, not in invoice staging. Once I run this, which is a metadata operation, no data is going to move, just some pointers. So I run that and I look at the tables now. And that has moved out the oldest data, the 2020 data here, has moved into invoice staging. Um, so we've taken that, we've done that delete that we needed to do. And then I can simply come in and say truncate invoice staging. Again, so this is a, still an instant operation. So I run that and then look at the two tables and our data is gone. Our data is gone as a meta operation. Um, all right, so that's how you do the delete part. Now, you then need to, there's maintenance involved. There's, there's overhead in having this set up. So you need to automate that part. And then now we need new partitions. Um, if we look at our partitions, we know this, this old one, is no longer needed and we need a new one down here for January, February, March for April. So let's create those. Um, so I would come in here now, let's get that back up there. Um, and we need to alter our partition. So we will do alter partition function and that's our, our date partition function. And now to get rid of a partition, you need to do a merge. So we want to do merge range and then our oldest range. So this guy here. Um, so let me grab um, these, these guys again, so we can see this. Um, so what, what have we got at the moment? We've got a January, a February and a March in 2021 and four partitions. I'm going to get rid via a merge of the January partition. Um, so ultimately, if I, do it, I think I need my brackets there. So if I run this one now, with this merge, and we look at what we've got the setup then, you can see we've lost a boundary. We've only got two boundaries now. We've got February and March, and we've only got three indexes. Um, so what we need to do then is create uh, the, the latest, the more recent um, partition as well. So we do very similar here. We'll just take this line. Uh, but rather than a merge, we want to do a split this time. So split creates one for us. And we need this out in, in April. So let's do a run on that. And we should see again then. We're now back up to three partitions. Um, we've got data in the first three, but we've got no new data, obviously, in that April partition. You know, when we insert data into April, uh, I've got that there, but I can do it. Let's do, so what is it, 2021, uh, April, and things were looking good. All right, so we've got the data in there. And then if I look at this again now, you can see we've got data again on all of those partitions. And then you just repeat. Um, so we do, you would then at the end of the month, you would come in here, you would switch out partition one again. We do the truncate, um, we go and split and merge, and it just keeps on cycling through each month. So, and that enables you to, to do that with metadata operations. So that's a sliding window um, using partitions. Hope that was interesting. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down is not. Uh, don't forget to click that subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.